you determine how fast you want to go before the speed line. So, so that's something that's some of the first California. This transition, you know, a snake run. Vancouver was like the California of Canada, and we, uh, it was the epic place to be. The geometry of the park is all based on a spiral. Yeah. So there are parabolic and hyperbolic curves. Saturday, October 7th, 1978, the District of North Vancouver opens Sealand Skate Park. This skate park, without anyone's predetermined vision of it doing so, would proceed to outlast every other skate park in Canada and possibly North America. I was filled with wonder at nature's sight and sound I was through there. Yeah, then again, maybe the creators of Sealand did intend it to last this long. I was grooving. Won't you come along with me? In 1977, Monty Little, Rob Leshgold, Nico Weiss, and Nelson Holland got together to create the Sealand Skate Park. My feet they got to walking. I went past Lion's Gate. My body got to feeling good. The original concept of the park was based on the idea of being able to carve or surf down the banks of the bowl with the ability to control your speed as you go.
many parks at the time had the tendency to give you too much speed with a narrow design, which was hard for beginners, and without the right skills could be sketchy. A year earlier, Monty and Nelson's West Vancouver Skate Park opened. Unfortunately, they had an almost ridiculously low budget. Oh, yeah. So basically what we did is we, we have a, a winding sidewalk that ends in a bowl. It was geared to start the top, just like see them and do your whole nine yards. You can't do that once man, you get too much speed. And so you, you, you were locked into this kind of a real fast line. They got going way too fast. You couldn't use the whole park. So was Sealand the answer to creating a park that was user-friendly to just about anyone who wanted to start skateboarding? I need more grooving. Won't you come along with me? Cause old Stan's park, yeah, it's the coolest park in history. The implication is that old is, is not as good as new. Mm -hmm. But there's important distinction. Yeah. Some things are classic. Mm -hmm. And I think Sealand, to be immodest, is classic. Some will say that Sealand's heyday was during the 1980s. Skateboarding had become popular again. During Expo 86, bright clothing, big bangs, and getting air was what skateboarding was all about. The first contests at Sealand were put together by Monty Little, the founder of CASA. They were called Expression Sessions. These Expression Sessions would last until 1990. the peak of the quote-unquote 80s style of skateboarding was in 1986. From this point on, things began to change.
By the time the early 90s rolled around, skateboarding had completely changed once again. As a result of these changes, many skaters quit. Some adapted to the changes, and a select few, well, it didn't seem to bother them much at all. Uh, the, the geometry of the park is all based on a spiral. So there are parabolic and hyperbolic curves, yeah. which are sections of, of spirals. Yeah. And going into the bowl is actually a decreasing spiral. That was also designed for safety. So if you come in a little too slow, you'll actually go slide down. The, the, the spiral will pull you down rather than throw you out. The curve of a wave 
or of a natural hillside is naturally a parabolic curve. I was doing my best to come as close to the laws of physics that you can. It looks like something in nature if you, if you go there. It's like well, to, natural looking. Yeah, well, if you analyze the human body yeah. and you take a, a really beautiful lady and you analyze them in terms of geometry, you'll find that uh, the, the human uh, form is, a, is various sections of spirals. Mm -hmm. You can actually geometrically analyze it. And uh, the shape of a woman's breast is, is parabolic. Did you, did you, did, when you first build it, did you guys, like you, Monty and Robin, um, did you uh, think that people were going to actually be carving down and then back up as well? I'll be truthful, I didn't imagine that was going to happen. Yeah. Sweeping those leaves, mopping that 
this contest. Looks good, man. It's nice and green. Early in Sealand's life, 1981 to be more precise, there was a flash flood that nearly washed the park away. Amazingly, the bowl didn't crumble into the river. It just lay hanging over the edge. The solid construction and design of the park is what saved it from becoming a casualty of nature. I built it to last. Yeah. So that concrete is 5,000 PSI or higher. Yes. And most concrete work in the Western world, you're lucky if it's 3,000 PSI. An engineer would tell you that that structure is actually a continuous monolithic membrane stress skin structure that the lines of force are easily resolved with a parabolic curve. Yeah. So that means the whole structure is self-supporting. So even though the, the, the flood came and washed away half of the earth from underneath it, yeah. it still held its, its structural integrity. If it was demolished, it may have ended up a tennis court. In time, the riverbank got rebuilt, and things returned back to normal. <laughs>